Thank you. <clears throat> Just to give a little context for this little uh, demonstration here, um, one of the most scrutinized institutions in our country are the school districts. Would you all agree with that? So it's, it's not so surprised that there's a lot of research that's done in classrooms. So one of the studies recently said that 96% of all questions asked by teachers are what we call closed questions. Questions that just elicit a one word response and then you move on from there. So I want to introduce the concept of open-ended questions. And open-ended questions require answers that require more than a single word answer or a yes or a no answer. So we're going to begin these questions with three words, what, how, and why. So ask yourself in your own mind any of those questions. You can't say yes or no to it. All right. um, those parents in, 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 in the audience, when you wanted your children to eat your vegetables, you would ask something like, would you like to have carrots or beans? Yes. Yes is not an answer, right? They have to make another answer. So open-ended questions stimulate children to think. And when they think, we help to find out their own agendas. And we develop a greater understanding about how to work with them because we're listening to what they're interested in. So these are some sample open-ended questions. So you're having a meaningful uh, conversation. Well, what does that mean to you? What do you think will happen next in the story? How did you go about solving that problem? How did you make that choice? That's a very good one for when you're talking about guiding children's behavior and disciplining. How did you make that choice? What information do you have about that? And what would you differ do differently next time? And finally, why do you feel that way? So open-ended questions are really not easy to answer. And there's a lot of research out there right now that um, when, when, when children are asked open-ended questions, they have difficulty responding to them. Because of, of, of the way our assessment system works, they're used to just giving the right answer and moving forward. So what I want to do is I just want to introduce uh, one of the most highly regarded uh, pieces of, of, of literature ever in the history of man. And I'm going to show you how, with those three little how, what, and why questions that we can carry in our pocket, we could expand this to great lengths. And you may know the beginning. It goes something like this. This little piggy went to market. How did he get there? He drove. What did he drive? A car. What did he want to get at the supermarket? French fries. <laughs> and why did he go there in the first place? To get food. To get food. Okay. This little piggy stayed home. What did he do at home? He played games. What type of games? It's there. It's there no matter what. Even the nursery rhymes now, right? <laughs> Why did he want to stay at home in the first place? So he could play the games. So he could play the games. Okay. This little piggy, piggy had roast beef. What else do pigs eat? Pork. <laughs> Pork it is. And what did he put on his pork? <laughs> Barbecue <laughs> pork. Right. He might have been from Texas there, right? Now, this little piggy had none. Why did this little piggy not get any roast beef? Because he didn't want it. He wasn't hungry, right? Was he being punished for doing something, maybe? Oh, what was he doing? Playing too much Xbox. I love the way technology is being weaved into this. This is just beautiful. And finally, 
did the little pig really cry wee, wee, wee all the way home? Thank you.